Good morning. Here we are, Saturday morning, Rose Red Alive. I'm uh, just going to wait for a few of you to come online, and then we're going to get started. How great is our God? Mm. Let's hope that everybody can get on easily. Lovely, Rona, to see you. I trust that you were able to find the live quickly and so good to have you on board what a beautiful saturday morning so wonderful wonderful to see you all thank you for coming on this morning yes look at this wow i can see it being a bit easier to get online this morning i'm personally having some internet problems so I've got my screensaver on at the back, but I couldn't get to the music. It just keeps throwing it off, which is a bit strange because we have very good internet in our home. But anyhow, long story short, we are here. Wow. Yes, Liz, you got on this morning easily. That's cool. That is cool. Lovely to see you, George. Uh, Georgie. <laughs> Blacksmith. <laughs> Mm. Andrew Morrison, good to see you. Jill Mika, wonderful. James and Jill are here. How amazing is that? That's gorgeous. Jean van Amava, good to see you. <laughs> Who knows what God's going to say today, hey? Here the Starbucks, great Michelle Marquis, uh, Karen McLaughlin, lovely to see you. Wow. Jenny. Heinemann, wow, good morning, good morning. Jenneth, beautiful to see you, wonderful. Oh, that's excellent, Lani, great. Excellent, yes, good morning, Jenny. Good morning, let me see if I can get the screen of the TV out of the way, because uh, that's going to bug you. Or maybe just switch it off. Yeah, that's probably the best. Nice to see you, Jackie. Excuse me. Go away now. There, it's gone. <laughs> oh, technology. Craziness. Oh, Pamela, lovely. I'm so glad you're on. That's awesome. This is the good day of the Lord. Yeah, there's 32 of us, and I'm not going to delay. Good morning, Judith. I'm not going to delay. We're going to pray, and we're going to... Uh, hear what the Father wants to say. <laughs> Helene, and love goes where my rosemary goes. <laughs> oh my gosh, I have something I need to show you talking about that. Give me a moment to go and fetch it so I can show you my um, this blessing. Hold on one second, I'll be back. Do you remember that I spoke about how my husband would write me love letters? Hi, Shirley. How um, my husband would write me love letters on the covers of straws. And so uh, we would be, say, uh, one of the coffee shops. And then he would take the cover, the paper cover off his straw. And when I go somewhere, sometimes I would say, I will go and do the grocery shopping and he'll wait for me and then when I come back there's this little rolled up, not rolled up, folded up little, just to say, my rose, um, wait, a scroll to my wife. Anyhow, so I'm so blessed that I managed to keep two. You know how things end up either in a book or scrunched up in the bottom of a handbag? So. The other day I showed you the two. The one is written across that way and the other one is written down like that. And I said to you uh, that my sister had said to Lionel, I will know when you better, when you write a love letter to Rose. And uh, one day I came into the study and he asked me to put um, sellotape um, 
on this that he was working on on his desk. I didn't think too much of it and I went away and he had learned to write with his left hand and he wrote the third one that, well, he probably wrote me more in, over the time, you know, before, when he could write with his right hand. But this was the one that my sister had said to him, come on, Lionel, you need to write to that love letter because that was one of his things. So I found all three now and I've put them under glass and so there you can see it. Um, the one that is written all the way line by line down. The one that is written, not there, there. That one that's written across. And then the final one which says, Dear, excuse me, Dear Gingy, I love you so much, my love. That bottom one. And uh, I've now put it under glass to preserve it in a little frame. Um, the love letters, the scrolls that he wrote to me. And uh, you can see that his handwriting had, um, he had mastered it to a degree. He has a very beautiful handwriting, but that last one at the bottom where it says, my Genji is the one that he wrote with his left hand. And uh, isn't that precious? Isn't that precious? So if my husband, who was flesh and blood, write, wrote and loved me so well, how much more your heavenly bridegroom, Jesus, loves you so well. He loves you so well. His love is always with you and surrounds you and is never switched off. He loves you always. He's just so magnificent. So one last look of my husband's love letters to me on the cover of straws. This one going down, that one going across and with his left hand as he recovered from the stroke. So these are my treasures that I've now put under glass and in a frame. Isn't that beautiful? And so tomorrow would have been his birthday, eh? And he would have been turned 68 tomorrow. So, because he was born in 22, that's right. I think, I, no, sorry, in 52, so I think that's right. Um, yeah, so lovely to have you all on board. So now we need to pray. Father, thank you for your amazing love that you first loved us, that you came and you found us while we were yet sinners, lost, in the miry clay and you came and you reached out to us we thank you that you cut covenant with us and that your covenant is so full so full of promise and that you're never one that would break your covenant or break your promise and so we are so secure in your love in your plan and in your purpose and so we thank you this morning that as we read your word and as you speak to us by your Holy Spirit, that we will be built up on this Saturday morning, refreshed. I pray for each and every one that is watching today and listening today, that there will be a stirring inside of us, that we'll stand up with boldness and courage, hope for today and hope for tomorrow. In Jesus' name, amen. So when the enemy comes in like a flood, God raises up a standard in the spirit. And so we know that even when everything is coming against us and we look at our circumstances and we see the tsunami of the enemy, not the tsunami of God, and you feel like dominoes and one domino is um, touching on the next and there's a series of being undone. Last night when I spoke on the seven o'clock live, uh, I had a word of knowledge of a man that had lost his business and he has been wrestling with God and thinking that if they open to level two or level three that he might still be able to salvage it. But each day that goes by, he's become more and more uh, fearful. And the Lord 
and the word to him was that the Lord knew all about it and that he was going to turn it around. And I remember saying that doesn't mean that it's that business, but he's got something else. And I also feel that that word can apply to a number of people. And we also prayed for anybody that was watching to receive Jesus Christ as Lord. Um, there was just such a wonderful, powerful spirit of um, uh, anointing, sorry, of fire last night. And we asked the Lord to baptize us afresh with fire. And I hope that you have uh, have not only received it but that you're going to be walking in that because it's what he has done you are not going to go with your billows and try and pump up what you have received the gifts of god are exactly that free gifts that will operate in you and through you as you are faithful with a little god will make you faithful with much um, just as every day you would put the gas on on your on your stove or on your grill and every day you you press in that button and you turn on the gas and you know without a doubt that there's going to be a flame because you have filled up had that bottle of gas filled up and you know that it will not fail it you don't have to pray whether when you switch it on in the morning whether it will work or not you have total assurance that it's coupled it's in this bottle is coupled to the line and the gas is going to produce a, fire, a flame and in the same way we, we don't have to beg God we don't have to work up a sweat for the Holy Spirit and anointing to be operational um, moving in the Spirit and living by the Spirit is so natural that we are amazed that it has such supernatural results and so God has a word of prophecy for each and every one from the time even before the foundation of the earth. His decree and his DNA and his plan and his love and his grace and his mercy was already decreed and declared over you. And uh, a few days ago, we looked at the fact that God is a creator and, uh, and the God of design and that there's no evidence in creation that he does half design or half creation. There aren't planets that are half designed. There aren't galaxies that are left half done. Everything, when Jesus sat, rested on the seventh day of creation, he, it was done. He entered into his rest. Everything was in place. When he came from the cross and he went into the depth of the earth and he took captivity captive and he ascended into heaven he gave gifts unto man and he did that that he needed to do which was part of God's original plan to send his only son to be the savior of the world the savior of the world and that in this time he wants to pour out his spirit it doesn't say on the believers it says he will pour out his spirit on all flesh so that speaks about an end time outpouring that is um, so wide, so high, so deep. That he's going to pour his spirit out on the young and the old, on the male and female. There is not one piece in that scripture uh, in Joel and repeated in the Gospels that says anything other than that. And uh, Jesus keeps his word. He said to the disciples, I have to go. So one exactly like me will come and he will lead you into all truth. And that was the Holy Spirit. And it wasn't three years later that they were asking God, when's it going to happen? As they waited in the upper room on um, that appointed day in their waiting, the Holy Spirit came. Jesus also said, I've got to go because I'm preparing, I, pre I have prepared a place for you. And he said, if this was not so, I would not tell you that. 
In other words, he said, I would never lie to you. What I decree and declare in the prophetic realm by those that I have put my prophetic anointing on, I watch over the words that are released over your life to make sure that they come to pass. Nothing can separate you from the decrees of God. Nothing can separate you from His promises. Nothing can separate you from His plan. He is not a man that He should lie, but He is the Son of God. He is God, and His word is steadfast and sure. Let's this morning call to remembrance, remembrance the wonderful prophetic words that he has spoken over us and how it was said to Timothy, do not forget the prophecies that were uh, spoken over you even from childhood. Do, uh, do not allow people to despise your youth. So sometimes we feel inadequate or we feel immature in the gift and the calling of God and I want you to know that God hasn't put the gift inside of you in a seed form and then um, like a cherry tree that has to grow and then maybe in the second year it will it will um, bear fruit what he gives you is in its full dynamos power and so um, it will operate with great power if you will switch the switch, like you switch the switch on the um, stove that produces the fire and brings the gas. The gas comes on the gas line and then it ignites into a fire. And Father says, I have put my Holy Spirit inside of you and I've given you the giftings of heaven um, severally. And so when you uh, begin to speak, the Holy Spirit, the line, the line, the supply line from Holy Spirit and from Jesus, uh, as you speak, it will come forward in dunamis power and there will be results. There's also a wonderful scripture that says, and signs and wonders will follow the preaching of the word. And so when we speak the word for what it really is, the sign of that word, the, the wonder of that word becomes life. That is why we want to speak life. We want to speak um, prophecies, edification, exhortation, and comfort. Even if the Lord shows you something that's uh, not positive, it's not so that you can say, God told me the world was going to collapse. It's so that we will intercede, that we will take, that's a word of knowledge, and we will say, Father, Father, if there be one righteous one, will you spare them? He, he, he gives us information called the secrets of the Father, and he entrusts his secrets to those that he can trust. And when he says those that he can trust, he means those that will be diligent with the information. So will you be his love letter? The way to be God's love letter is to acknowledge that um, and, and gratitude, to acknowledge with gratitude that he has gifted his children, that he is not, sorry, I see we had an internet reboot there. So uh, God is not doing, are we still online? It keep, keeps saying to me that it's trying to reconnect. So I will just keep going and uh, I will, repeat some of those things as I'm going along. So uh, uh, God doesn't want you to second guess your gift and your calling. And uh, he has put a powerful word in our mouths for individuals and for nations. Thank you. I see, I see I'm back on. We will be patient with one another. If I see it go off, I will repeat a few lines before I go on. Yes, we are God's love letters. We are also God's kisses from heaven. So now I want you to call to remembrance the prophecies that were on you even for a long time, a long time. And think about the key words. Think about what 
it was that was prophesied over you that defines you. Maybe it was prophesied over you that you will be a good teacher of the word. Maybe it was prophesied over you that you will be one that's of compassion. Maybe it's been prophesied over you that you'll heal the brokenhearted and set the captives free. Maybe it's been prophesied over you that you'll be a teacher in the body of Christ. Maybe it's been prophesied that you're a digger of wells, um, which is a revivalist. Maybe it's been prophesied that you will go um, win the loss, which is an evangelist. Maybe it's prophesied that you will go to the ends of the earth. Maybe you've been prophesied over many times that you will continually go to Israel, which means that you are one that will pray the nations of the Jewish people back to their homeland and, and even stay the hand of the enemy. Um, I want you to know, yes, uh, Pamela, there has been some signal problems. And so we are just being patient with the airwaves and the internet at this moment. And I'm praying that we will stay on uh, even despite that. So twice it has had a little wheel and said to me, reconnecting to the internet. So um, let's just um, hope, uh, trust the Lord to keep the internet line uh, very definitely live. So last night we had spoken about um, the power of God and that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is at work within us. And so this is the season of great blessing um, and with a backdrop of great adversity and if you concentrate on the backdrop then you will not see the 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 um, promise and so do not put your eyes on the setting it would be the same thing as going to watch in a magnificent production and the the maybe a ballet and the dancers are well trained and they know the every move and they're on those points and they are twirling and that dancer can lift that ballerina with such ease and we miss all of it because we are looking at the backdrop behind the dancers and we're looking at the fact that there's maybe something there that you would have done differently and uh, don't look at the backdrop of adversity. Look to the one that has given you the promise so that you will not only cross into your season of blessing, but that you'll be established in that that he has called you to. We are in a place of uprooting where churches and ministries um, are being redefined and um, and there's a stirring of the passion of God working in the churches working in the leaders and working in the believers and there will be such a shift in the season and if we don't like change this will make us uncomfortable but if we understand that uh, Jesus is a game changer but when he changes the game, he doesn't take us to realms of uh, downplay. He takes us to realms of increase, not realms of decrease, realms of increase. And you'll see whole groups of churches beginning to speak the same message because they are listening to Holy Spirit like never before. Our mandate is being refined and refired. The centrality of the gospel is being reestablished and the centrality of the gospel is Jesus Christ crucified, buried and resurrected. Your sins are forgiven. You've been made whole. We, do, we are not in a season of going back to the rubbish bin to try and fix ourselves but we are in a place of surrender where we are saying come Lord Jesus come come Lord Jesus come we are not looking for Jesus afar off we know that he is inside of us and has anointed us for the season that we are in right now let us continue to preach Jesus 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 and many many years ago I woke up in the middle of the night and 
all that I had ministered in a ladies meeting went like a ticker tape before me and very quickly but the whole message in an instant and the Lord said how much of Jesus was in that and it has nothing 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 to do with condemnation and I said uh, and the Lord answered he didn't ask me to answer he answered and he said in the end times only Jesus will stand only Jesus will stand so father is asking us to pull on the promise of our salvation to lean in to the promise that uh, our sins are forgiven that our individual sins are forgiven that our nation's sins are forgiven and that in chronicles it says um hear our cry and our prayer lord and then says and let us turn from our wicked way and you will hear us from heaven and you will um you will heal our you will heal our land heal our land and so father wants you to know that your sins are forgiven past present and future and that the gifts of callings of god have not diminished in their power and but neither has the blood of christ diminished in its power it is the same as the day that it was poured out and the blood on the lintel of our home will keep disease and death away from us and the blood empowers us and right now the blood of the martyrs are calling out as the blood that has been shed in the soil of our country is calling out for at the name of Jesus the blood that is eternal speaks and it is the better sacrifice reposition yourself do you know that all of prophecy is the spirit of uh, spirit of prophecy is Jesus and Jesus is the spirit of prophecy so when we prophesy we are bringing Jesus into the equation people get tangled up with unless it's got some scripture in it it's not God this is a rhema prophecy is the secrets of heaven and the rhema word of God and it says that you can have many different gifts but that we desire to prophesy when we worship the blood avails when we pray the blood avails um, do you remember in the early days how we would pray the blood over our children before they got out of the car to go into the school and it seems that the blood is being put in a box to the old Pentecostal religion no the blood of Jesus gives you entry into the supernatural the blood of Jesus is your covering the blood of Jesus is the forgiveness of sins the blood of Jesus causes the enemy to scatter for the blood of Jesus has no power for the enemy it has power for his children and the blood of Jesus brings you um, body healing that the blood causes you to live in divine health do you know that it says that the prayers of the husband will be the sanctifying of his wife's body my husband would pray the blood over my body my husband would pray uh, over my hormones my husband would pray over my well-being Jesus is your husband Jesus is praying over your hormones male and female why do you think a man has midlife crisis it's a hormone crisis and the blood of Jesus speaks better that yes it's an eternal covenant and the blood of Jesus is a better covenant than the blood of bulls and rams it's by his blood that's why all of the blood was taken into heaven 
was not left in the earth. It was taken to heaven and speaks on our behalf. It was the, the, um, the covenant is by blood. The, the blood was the price that was paid for you and for me. And even when we are covenant breakers, God is still the covenant keeper. I agree with you, Gerda, that the network is not good today and that this network problem will move out of the way. I agree with you. And if I come on at seven tonight and we still have a network problem, I'm going to run my live on my data because I have a lot of data. But we will just bring this message, pull this message together and, and close. And so whole churches are coming under apostolic fathers and mothers and prophetic. This is the finest hour for the moms and dads in the body of Christ. When I was young and somebody acknowledged me as a spiritual mother, I almost wanted to lose it because I felt it spoke of old age. Today, I am proud to be known as a spiritual mother in the city of Cape Town or wherever. Um, mother, a spiritual mother isn't something that you declare or decree. Even being a prophet is not something that you go around declaring and decreeing. The gifts of seeing, hello, Sandra, you bear, wonderful to see you, my precious friend. And so um, the gifts and callings are recognized by the, by the children of God and they are set apart to that. And so I want to say to you that um, being a spiritual mother or father isn't something that you set yourself up for, but that more and more people acknowledge your mothering or your fathering. Those that understand gender say to me, do not call yourself a spiritual mother. You are a father. It's not a gender issue. And so I want to say that there are going to be many, many, many streams of groups of ministries and churches that are going to come under apostolic relationship. I don't want to speak about apostolic coverings or apostolic networks. I want to talk about apostolic relationships and that apostolic relationship will keep you safe because they will preach the apostles doctrine or the what the apostles speak and what did the apostles speak? They spoke about building the church. They spoke about us not taking glory for ourselves that the apostolic anointing is foundational that we are not giving praise to the apostles, we are giving praise to the head of the apostles, which is Jesus Christ. And so the, the, the systems of the church in this world are being reconstructed and reconfigurated at this time. There's going to be a greater understanding of living under grace and released from law. I'm not talking about grace that takes you into sin. I'm talking about grace that brings you into the full work of what the price that Jesus has already paid, that you cannot qualify yourself. It is by grace and it is by faith. And we receive him. We receive him as our savior and we receive him as our Lord. Many are saved, but not many have recognized the lordship of Jesus Christ. He is the head of the church. Man is not the head of the church. Apostles are not the head of a church. Um, uh, Jesus is the head of the church and I believe that he is asking for his church back and as an apostolic people we need to point our lives and the lives of the people back to Jesus, back to the foundation for he is the foundation. It says that we must be very careful what we add to the foundation of Jesus. It says each man must be circumspect about what he builds. And we are not building ivory towers and uh, models unto ourselves. Uh, even Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. He was pointing them to Jesus. My husband used to say to me when my prophetic gift 
was very strong, which is, is still strong. I'm not, uh, let me just cancel that. My husband used to say to me, Rose, never draw people to yourself with a gift for a church cannot be built on a gift. A church has to be built on the right foundation. And uh, that is a bit very precious advice and wisdom to me that I cannot draw you onto even this Facebook Live because you're going to get a prophetic word. That That is signs following the preached word. But my purpose is to point you to Jesus who is the author and finisher of your faith and to encourage you and to get you ready as his bride with a hope and expectation a hunger so that the spirit and the bride together will call out come lord jesus come we need to give him first place at the table how many of my talks have i said to you who is sitting at your table as the lord gives you the cup of fellowship he is at your table he, the table of those that you are sitting with, that are those that are closest to you and that are co-laboring with you, they all are those that acknowledge that Jesus is the one that has set the table for us in the midst of the enemy. And listen here, men and women of God, let us not throw away the hope of of our salvation our salvation is not in what we eat our salvation is not in any of these things our salvation is not on how many facebook pages we have our salvation is not about how we dress our salvation is in the power of the shed blood of jesus christ and we are knitted together by the cup of fellowship and that is the blood that was shed for us and the lord jesus says in the word do this as often as you meet in remembrance of me tonight at seven o'clock when i come online i would like you to have something with you to break bread a biscuit a cracker a piece of bread a juice even water and we are going to break bread this evening together for the father says that we need to do that yes um estelle van veik i see you say you crave a new and deeper revelation of jesus that is our heart's desire that we have fellowship with him and we have fellowship with one another there is a scripture that says we prevent people coming we make it difficult it was said to the pharisees or the sadducees it says you prevent people coming to the father through your many rules and regulations it's like straining gnats and so there's always another reason it hurts my heart that people are being bullied and told be careful what you watch now because we don't want you to stray and stay with your stream and don't watch other people's material lest you get confused this is party politics even in the church to keep people captive and um, yeah let me not do that because the body of christ is jesus bride and so we are not allowed to speak against his bride i love each and every one of you and i am proud at what the lord is doing in you and through you you are his blood washed children and we are of the same family we are of the same bloodline we have the same dna we are not being boastful and we are not promoting ourselves we are all laid down lovers we are all seeking his face we are all of the same lump the same loaf the same message in the early years of ministry i used to be heartbroken if there were churches that were anti the prophetic now i go it's okay there must be no offense amongst us the only debt we allow to have 
is the debt of loving, loving, loving. I want to pray that your love tanks are full, full of the love of Jesus. Full, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. We don't have to have any clever answers. We have to have the love of Jesus. The love of Jesus will turn away wrath. For people might come towards you with a big fight, but the blood of Jesus is sufficient. When your enemy slaps you on the face, it says turn the other cheek. In other words, he's saying don't run away. Don't run away. Yes. If the word says pray for your enemies, then um, Father is saying pray that they come to know the love of Jesus. People only respond because of hurt and because of brokenness and because they are their, their identity is not secure in Jesus. They need healing. So there's a greater grace that we will prefer one another, that we will love one another. There's grace and power and miraculous and uh, sorry, miracles and grace and power and miracles operate together. God is raising up voices to proclaim the truth that will set us free. That will set us free. God is also going to use us in this new season in the marketplace as we are being moved out of the four walls of isolation. As you're standing in the supermarkets, maybe not now, yes, right now, and you're standing in the supermarket, pray for the person that is standing in front of you. I don't know how many times I've been in the supermarkets and I watch the person in front of me or maybe three ahead of me and they're counting out their copper money because they can't afford even the little, the little stick of butter or the little bottle of milk. And we are called to help one another and to bless one another. And I will stretch forward and pl say, please can I pay it forward? Because you don't want to make people embarrassed. And I say, by the love of God, I want to pay it forward. Bless one another as Christ has blessed you. You say, but I don't have enough to bless anybody else. I want you to know if you have 50 rand, you can give five of it to somebody else. What is 10%? Bless. There's an increase in this new season. There's an increase of intimacy with the Lord in prayer. Have you not experienced that? Such an increase of intimacy and prayer. We're not vying with other lovers. There aren't thousands of things that pull our attention now. There's an increase of intimacy and prayer and worship. Even last night as I went online and I saw that my beautiful friend Lily and Yaku were uh, from Debron, were heading uh, the time of South Worship South Africa. My heart, I felt like I connected with them, like we were standing in the same room, that we were standing in the same atmosphere of heaven as the worship took us into another realm. When we speak about the supernatural, do you know that God can transport you to wherever he wants to transport you in the spirit? From earth to heaven and from heaven to earth, he catches us up. Because we worship in spirit and in truth. We don't, our bodies house this. 
but we're not it's, we are not communing only because I can shake your hand or hug you. We are connected spirit to spirit. And so when we do these watch parties where we all jump on and worship together, we are worshiping together as our spirit connects with one another and the spirit of God. It was beautiful, wasn't it? It was. They have such a heart for God. And such a gentleness on their lives. It's like they made a way for us to come into the presence. And they were holding the door open with their intimate worship. We've lived for a long time behind closed doors, protecting ourselves. And now you come right into my home. And I get right into your home through live isn't that amazing isn't that amazing it's like there's an unveiling of our lives i'm going to finish with this point this morning and say we are coming into a dimension of god amongst us there's a dimension now of God amongst us. Can I just quickly go back to the point of fellowshipping in the spirit before I, I talk this last point. You are more the church now than you have ever been. Because we are worshipping in spirit and in truth. We are connecting in spirit and in truth we can come into buildings with masks on we can come in on the third song and leave in the last prayer and actually not be in fellowship at all but when you come because you are drawn by the spirit to meet in the spirit we are right now in a place of true worship for we are worshiping in spirit and in truth when i spoke about apostles laying foundations it's like the scaffolding of church has been removed the scaffolding is have you done the membership course the scaffolding is have you done the prophetic school? The scaffolding is, have you been training for the healing anointings? And God says, all of this is hidden in Christ Jesus. He says, I gave you the keys of the kingdom. Amazing. And so I just wanted to backtrack to say we are learning to know one another by the spirit because we are connecting spirit to spirit and we are of the same spirit, the spirit of Jesus Christ, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Isn't that amazing? So many people are fighting and kicking at the government to open the churches because we are prevented. No, we are not. We are not prevented. Your relationship is personal with him and then to one another. You have more people sitting at the table that he has set for you now than you've ever had because we rush into fellowship. We have a quick sip of the communion and we leave. We are really having our hearts knitted together in spirit and in truth. I also want to say to you that persecution grows the church. Not the church as a building, the church that you are a living stone of. Just tell somebody they're not allowed to touch something, Adam and Eve in the garden. There will be a way to work around it. And we can't meet in a building. And because we can't meet in a building, the people are freaking out because it's not measurable.
but it's in spirit and in truth without measure. So let me come to my closure for this morning. We are develop developing a dimension of God amongst us. And when we have this dimension of God amongst us, we'll have the fear of the Lord upon us. Wow. Can I say it again? When we have a dimension of God amongst us, we'll have the fear of the Lord upon us. We are in a season where we have a dimension of God amongst us. Jesus Christ in us brings the fear of the Lord upon us. What is the fear of the Lord? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Who is wisdom? Jesus is wisdom. Let the dimensions of God amongst us increase the fear of the Lord upon us. What does the fear of the Lord do? It brings us to wisdom. That takes away confusion. That you don't know what to touch and what to let go. That you embrace the centrality of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That you take hold of the blood. That you know that the blood speaks louder than the blood of bulls and rams. That you understand that you are established in him. That you do not have to add anything to the message of salvation. It is not Jesus plus. It is Jesus period. How amazing, amazing, amazing. If you're asking for wisdom, you're asking for the increase of his influence in your life. And it says, if you lack wisdom, ask the Father that will give generously. You didn't get a little dose of Jesus that increases over years. You got the fullness of the Godhead when you said, come Lord Jesus into my life. I pray that your morning is powerful as you understand the fullness of Jesus Christ and the blood that was shed for you and the access that it gives you in the spiritual realm. That we are being knitted together as we were knitted in our mother's wombs individually, we are knitted together in the womb of our salvation, in the womb. Do you know that in the Old Testament it says, and the Lord saw this baby threshing around in its own blood and there was nobody to tend to it. And he said, I will rub you with salt and I will tend to your umbilical cord. And so Father says, even if you feel like one that is untimely born, he says, I tend to you and I am your blood supply. Let us um, embrace the teaching of the blood of Jesus and the full work of his grace in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for your word that is as sharp as a two-edged sword, cutting away the fat, cutting away the froth and the bubble, cutting away the fancy um, dippings of sauces and things that would attract people to a program and not to a person. We thank you that we want to be honed and on fire and filled and anointed how we study the lives of the revivalists their messages were simple their messages weren't uh, 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 points on a teaching their message was around the person of jesus christ may jesus be your anchor in jesus name amen have an awesome morning. I'm going to load the message up 
to some of the groups that I send it to and also onto YouTube. The YouTube loading takes quite long, so it might only be up this evening. But if you miss out on anything on Facebook Live, there's about 52 messages already just in this lockdown that's on a Rose Rider YouTube. Go and have a look, subscribe and uh, you can look at the messages again and again you can also send it on to a friend sometimes we don't have the boldness to speak to a friend about jesus but we can send a message and say this is a friend of mine won't you listen to it and give me uh, your feedback and that way it opens a dialogue to speak about the lord i love you i'll see you at seven o'clock this evening for those that don't know um Angus Bucken will be on, on live from 11 o'clock this morning till about 2 this afternoon. It will be the largest gathering for what used to be Mighty Men. It's for men and women, for young and old. They're expecting the largest gathering around the world uh, that has ever been. So tune in, find it, find it on Facebook, find the links. And uh, I hope that you enjoy the Holy Spirit, the wind of the Spirit, as Uncle Angus shares. Uh, he is at the work of God's hand and he has brought so much blessing of Jesus to our nation. You know, one has to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. And you know what? Holy Spirit said that I must close by breathing on you. Aren't you glad that I have we have the screen between me and you because right now everybody is so afraid of the coronavirus and it says and jesus breathed on his disciples and said to them that they will be filled and baptized in the holy spirit when the holy spirit comes and so i breathe on you today the love of jesus <sighs> I breathe on you the breath and the love of God. Have a wonderful day. God bless you.